Yo. Okay. What's up, everybody? We're, I'm happy this is working good yes. so far. <laughs> We're here. Uh, I can't believe it that it worked with the the same room. I didn't know if it was going to happen like that. Yeah. I mean, the YouTube gods blessed us this time. They don't always bless us, but this time we're blessed. If everybody watching notices, we have a new look. We also got new haircuts too. Unintentional. Oh. But unintentional, but you know we gotta be looking fresh for today. No, we planned this. Oh, we did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Billy, you getting a haircut? All right, I'm on my way. Boom. Simultaneous haircut. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to episode 84. With Dennis Lopez. So for everybody who came straight from the live, uh, the movie night we just had, we're up to no good. Um, Long Beach guys, a uh, bunch of new guys, young guns from Long Beach, California, and had a killer video. We had a ton of people come out to the movie night. And so I hope a bunch of you are in the chat now. And uh, we're going to keep it going with Dennis Lopez. Yeah, that video was really good. You know, it was like a lot of a lot of familiar faces and a lot of uh, not so familiar faces. But the video was done like so well. Everyone in that video just absolutely ripped. And I also actually wanted to give a special shout out to uh, a lot of guys in that crew because a lot of them were big donors for the Donate and Skate that was in Long Beach. Like, uh, yeah, I didn't know that until you mentioned it. Yeah, more than half that crew showed up and, and gave skates, and we were able to ship a lot of those skates out overseas. So, um, yeah, big shout out to all those guys. Those guys came together for that. They obviously came together to make an incredible video. So, uh, yeah, Hi, I just I, wanted I, to put that out there as well. That's awesome to hear. And we're still, we sent a bunch of stuff out for the donating escape. We still have some stuff left to do. So, we're going to keep updating everybody on that as well. Um, we figured we wait till everything's all sent out to fully update everybody and let the donors know where their stuff has gone to. But until then, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> it's a lot harder than we thought, but it's a challenge that we're willing to take and uh, we're going to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, someone was saying I still got to work on my lighting situation. So hopefully uh, we'll I'm going to get a new light actually soon in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned to that. But um, uh, before we go any further, I'm going to do the spiel. Please follow us on all of our social media platforms. Uh, can we do this on here, Austin? We're all new to this. YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. So when we have these cool movie nights and these uh, podcasts on the fringe or on the fly, you can just come check them out. Stop what you're doing. Go to Facebook. Give us a like. Go to our Instagram. Follow us. Also, go to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Give us a review um interactions matter so if you want to leave a comment in the youtube if you want to share the video all that stuff helps with the algorithm it helps boost our videos up so when you're watching skate videos it'll come up and things like that and you can check out some of our episodes we also have a patreon you could be a patreon for as little as a dollar a month and when you become a patreon you get access to exclusive content we have three pieces we have trick tips coming out soon and things of that nature so please stay tuned Hell yeah. We have a um, bunch of new patrons to thank also this month. Uh, this time around, we'd like to give a big shout out to Roel Castillo, Phil Nolan, Sean Casey, Marcus Todd, Dan Bond, Cletus Kuhn, Grace Kale, Benjamin Butler, Alex Chamberlain, Dirk Porter, Jason, Jason Calva, and Chris Medina. Thank you all so much for your support. Um, we have also to do tonight uh, our supporter Shout giveaway. Um, yes, the supporter giveaway. Yeah, we didn't do one for December yet, so we're going to do it right now. So like we say every month, we... Oh, now it's not going to work? Hang on. I think I got it now. There we go. So like we say every month, um, we take all of our Patreon supporters for the month and put them all in a random giveaway where they can have one of whatever item they want from our online story just to show our appreciation for you supporting us um all the names are in here we have 175 uh patreon members too which is really cool so thank you to everybody here we're going to pick one random winner right now and who are we going to have dreed am i saying that right dreed dread well, Dre, Dreid. Dreid. <laughs> Part of my uh, downfalls is words and, and stuff like that. So <laughs> my pronunciation is not the best. So Dreid, Dreid, whatever it is, we're going to reach out to you. Thank you for supporting us. You won for the month of December. And we're going to get you whatever you want from our online store. So thank you. And thank you to everybody else who is part of our Patreon community. Like Billy said, we have a lot of exclusive content only available on our Patreon. So check it out. Link in the description of our video. 
Yes. Um, we also have an episode coming up this week with uh, Yo-Yo, Yakobi, and we're going to talk about all the new things to Winter Clash. So if everyone's curious, if anyone's wondering what's going on with Winter Clash this year, because it's going to be very different, um, come and check out that episode. We're doing it this Thursday. And I'm actually really excited to know, too. I'm curious uh, yeah, and there's a lot about of questions. all these challenges. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. So this is going to be the place to have your questions answered. So come on Thursday. Um, we'll put a date and time up soon. But everybody, check that out. Uh, cool. Do we have anything else or should we bring on our guest? Uh, well, we have a sponsor for this episode as well. Oh, uh, that's right. How could I how forget? Could we we have forget. A... I, I, well, this is new. We're new to yeah. having a, a sponsor. So yeah, uh, we are very lucky to have this sponsor. And we have an episode from this sponsor. It is Blank by Rollerblade. They have a uh, new skate coming out. They got a new team, new project, everything coming out new for 2021. Mm -hmm. So we have a trailer made by Taylor Coburn. So we have that ready to go, right, Austin? Yeah, I'm going to run that right now. Nice. Hell yeah. That was Blank by Rollerblade. Everybody stay tuned. They got a lot of cool stuff coming up this year for 2021. We're going to keep you updated on all those things as well. So thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. Shout out to Blank by Rollerblade. Hell yeah. Very, Shoot. very cool. That whole team is awesome. Love Cam. Love uh, Sean. All of them. Really cool stuff. It's fun. Yeah, yep. as well. All of them. Mm -hmm. Should oh, we yeah. jump into our guest right now? Yes. I'm very excited. Okay. So without further ado, I hope you all ready for Dennis Lopez. Hang on, we got a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe I'll make that a little shorter. But shout out to Butter TV for that sound bite. We're uh, we're doing new things with this clearly if you're watching and uh, that's an actual sound bite from Blading Cup 2019 courtesy of Butter TV. So we wanted to keep it 100% skating right here. So thank you, Butter <laughs> TV, for that one. Dennis, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, thank you, guys. Hell yeah, we just yeah. watched your video in the, in the sections and your whole crew and everything like that. So I think everyone in the chat right now, everyone watching live is, is super hyped right now to have you on as well. Thank you, man. I'm hyped to be on here. Kind of nervous, but you know how it goes. <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. We're just going to be, be chit-chatting. But yeah, um... Dude, yeah, so when I saw this video, I was like, wow, first of all, it's been a long time since you see like a full length 52 minute project and everyone in that is like, there's a lot of familiar faces, but there's like a lot of people who I think people are seeing for the first time. A lot of people I saw for the first time and everyone's section was just so good. So on point, the music went so well. So, um, I don't know. I want to talk about up to no good, but maybe we should talk about, about you and your introduction to skating, uh, and how you got into skating and talk about your whole beginning. So me, I'm always curious, people like in your era, like coming up and how you started. Because when I started, it was like so many people skating was on MTV and things like that. So I'm always curious about like, what was your introduction? What was like your first video? Um, First, honestly, I didn't have no first video. Uh I think my dad bought me a pair of skates one time from Big Five, and there were some airwalks. And I'd never seen like no type of aggressive skating at all. So I was just like, all right, these are just regular skates, like recreational skates. And at the time, I was living in uh, LA, East LA, and he took me to a skate park in Culver City and uh, literally only had like four obstacles in there uh, this big old metal, like light pole for some reason, and then this kicker. And some like shitty 
uh, sorry for the language, uh, quarter pipes. That's cool. I curse all the time. I can't help I remember, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I was like, all right. I mean, I don't know how to grind. I'm, like I said, I never seen no, like any type of videos or anything like that. And I remember calling my dad and I was telling him to look at me. So I was like, went down the quarter pipe and I just took off, hit a kicker. And I swear for me, from what I remember, I swear I jumped and I was like over the fence and I looked at him and he looked at me like scared because he's seen me that high. And I landed <laughs> like you know perfect like on my feet and then after that he was just like yo we gotta go like i can already see <laughs> that you're just gonna things like i'm not trying to take you to the hospital type deal so damn that was kind of the first way i got introduced to rollerblading but like i said i never seen any videos and then um my friend robert robert wasabi he was in the video uh before i got into it i was a skateboarder so that was that's all i did and then one day he sent me a link uh, for some Genesis, some razors. And this was when AIM was around. And he was like, um, yo, buy these skates. And I was like, all right, uh, bought them. And then we went straight to a veteran skate park. And then he showed me a video at that. It was, uh, I think, a Brian Aragon video. And that Brian Aragon is like Robert's favorite like skater the whole time. And to me, I was just like, he, he was cool. Like it, it, he was good. Don't get me wrong. Like, Brian Aragon is a, a goat. Like everyone knows. Yeah. What, just, what year was this? This was 2012, I believe. Okay. So, okay. Later than I thought. Yeah, so I'm kind of like a late bloomer. I started when I was like 16, actually like 16, 17. And um, yeah, he showed me a Brian Aragon video and I was like, this is cool. And then, on the side, it said it was a, uh, it was Murda's uh, eagle section, and I was like, oh, I clicked on it just randomly just to check it, and as soon as his first trick came on, I was like, yo, this is the guy, like, <laughs> who I wanted to 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 copy to a T. And so I, ever since I saw that that day when I saw that, went to the straight to the skate park and was trying everything like his like whatever I remembered in the video, I was trying it, and. Thank good from choice. There, yeah, from there good it was taste. just like I right, that's where it took off. That's sick. That's like that's a good introductory story. Did you say that you had airwalks, airwalk skates? Yeah, airwalks from Big I, Five. I didn't even know that airwalk made skates. Yeah, it was, it was horrible skates. Like I mean before those I was riding recreational. It's like me and my cousin uh my dad bought us a pair of skates, but you we only could afford one pair. So we would always argue about like who can who wants to ride them first. So we came up with this idea like, all right, you take the left gate today, and I'll take the right, and we'll like run around the block just um, using our foot like a skateboard, and going around the block using it like that. And then the next day, I'll, I'll take the left gate, he'll take the right, and then uh, I think it was for my birthday or something like that. Uh, we went to Big Five, and he bought me some Airwalks, which those skates were horrible. <laughs> I picture them looking just like the sneakers, but with wheels on. <laughs> those, are, those are so horrible. Like, even as a little kid, like, I didn't know much about, like, what roll blades, but I felt the heaviness in them and, like, the the loudness of that plastic was just, like, bad. Yeah, especially, I mean, any skate not meant for aggressive skating is going to be horrible for what we do anyway. Yeah. So, you got you to gotta pick and choose. I'm curious what... I mean, I, I feel like I know the answer to this, but I want to hear what you say. But like, what about murder skating drew you in to be like, yo, this is the guy? Was it just like his his style, his swag, like his quick feet? What was it about it? It was it was his style. Like, it it, it was kind of like one of those things I couldn't really explain. It's like you know when you listen to an artist and you hear like one song and it's just like that one song is just like hits you. I don't know why I like you so much, but like <laughs> you're the you're the best to me. Right. And he just made it look cool. I think he just made it look cool. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mike had like a, a, a way with that. Like, like, like Vinny was very much like that too. Just like, he just looked like a cool guy that just ripped skating. Like, you know, like, look, I don't know, at least for me, that's what I get out of that a little bit too. He was a cool know. guy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was, yeah. it was, it, it attracted me so much. Like, um, I got from the music to like the clothes. I, I mean, at that time I wasn't wearing baggy clothes. I was kind of like all skinny jeans out. Cause, and mind you that skateboarding. Era was like, yeah. yeah, skateboarding era. So I was like yeah. transitioning back to this. 
So I was like, mm-hmm. all right. But um, yeah, that whole that whole little uh, part that he had, it was just yeah, it was amazing. That was a big yeah. one. Yeah, that was a yeah. big one. But uh, I like yeah, that's that, that's a good start. But like you know, I I noticed from your video, like you obviously have like some. Like, did you get into filming when you got back into skating? Because you obviously have some, like, really... Like, who are your film inspirations? Um, so... When it, uh, yeah, when I got back into skating, yeah, I kind of... I stopped for, like, five years. I stopped around 2013, I believe, or something like that. And then came back. And when I came back, um, I got into contact with Greg. Greg was the one that kind of showed me... Uh, how to film i i didn't know anything i didn't know how to use a hbx I greg preston know. yeah so people don't know preston yeah yeah from easy yeah he he showed me and um he, one day he gave me he was like yo can you help me film this thing and i'm like dude i don't know how to use this camera <laughs> he was like look just zoom in zoom out just try to show the trick as much as you can I'm like all right and uh i think we did something for his razors it was for his uh his mint something for the mint SLs he did for them. And uh, yeah, he should, he told me to, to help him film it. And then ever since then, I was just like, yeah, I need to buy a camera and get all my stuff too. That's uh one thing in the, I don't know how much of the video you filmed up to no good, but one thing you could tell by the video is that the filming is super proper. And that's part of what makes a crew like yours succeed too, is you guys all know how to film or most of you guys know how to film, make videos. And so you're going to be constantly getting footage of yourselves. That's kind of like, it reminds me of like how we grew up. We always had a camera around us too. We know what we were doing. It was so easy to put out content and it it made you guys want to skate even more, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once I got that camera and everybody and like, I was like, I I was, I'm more of like, I would say into filming now than I ever was. Um, just seeing the reactions after people land the tricks and like seeing how they liked it to be like, or how they want it to be filmed or how I can film it and make it look better is to me is like pretty cool. Cause it's not, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. I mean, like from filming my inspiration also too is Quentin Tarantino. Like that's where I try to take what he does in his movies like try to bring it into like what my movies are. Well, that's yeah, I saw that with like those those cool transitions. Like you, they were like those cut out transitions. Those really like yeah. Uh, there's like a lot like, of sweet moments like that. Yeah, and he does a lot of like uh you know zoom in effects and like zoom out and a lot of quick um drop downs to certain objects that he's filming and stuff like that. So if you've seen in some of, in the video, you see a lot of the where I'm focusing in the face and then drop down to the skate. Like that's Sick. what I took from him. That's what I wanted to bring. I was like, if I want to put myself out there and as a, a filmer and like separate myself from what everyone else does, I'm gonna do this little thing. So when people see that, like, oh, that's what he does. Yo, mad props to that. That's the first time I heard of a, a yeah, skating cool. a skating filmmaker influenced by someone like Quentin Tarantino and applying that to an actual skate video. That's yeah, so yeah. sick. It, that's so sick to hear. It, yeah, that's actually like actually like. <clears throat> That actually reminds me of like, you know, kid art, like or whatever, like Chris Brown, he used yeah. to like draw that same kind of like inspiration from like outside uh, things. And that's super cool, especially Quentin Tarantino, man. That guy hasn't had a bad movie. I love it. I love his shit. It's so mm-hmm. sick. Yeah, exactly. Like, but yeah, that's Kill- awesome. Yeah. Kill Bill movies are probably like my favorite. So I do get a lot of inspiration from there, like the titles and just like everything just feels like really right in that movie. So I that's what I try to bring to this. Damn, I'm gonna look yeah, at that see, video like, a whole that, different way now. <laughs> you see, that that's cool. You're talking about like you know drawing inspiration from like these movies and outside sources. Like a lot of like the people who I like in skating and in all these other arts, like you know even in music, they draw inspiration from these other arts too. Like you know you think about like RZA and like the Kung Fu. Oh yeah. Or definitely. like some some of your favorite skaters drawing like their parallels to music, whether it be like you know Bellino and one time to like heavy and you know rock and roll or this other you know, um, you know, Frankie deep and like hip hop and all this stuff. Yeah. So like, other than the movies, I'm curious, like what, what are the things that you draw influence from? Like in like, in, a, in other, like, you know, like you said, movie culture, like, so like what other like movie things or like outside music things, like where do you get the inspiration? Um, I, inspiration, I, it's kind of, 
I mean, from movies, uh, music, definitely from music. Um, uh, what else? And also, honestly, from like skateboarding too. Like I watch how some of these filmers film their tricks and stuff like that. So, and it's kind of the same. The people that are filming now and rollerblading, it's kind of the same thing. But there's a lot of diff- there's a lot of things that I see more than just like oh, just follow his like his skate and you know show the obstacle. It's kind of like I I kind of pay attention to like the background noise of what's happening. Like, hmm. let me. Let me catch the aesthetic of the the spot instead of let me, instead of just focusing on you or let me focus like have you half frame and half like as you see like these bushes because the colors look so nice like I just want to catch hmm. that and then you know pan to you and then do the trick. Hmm. Yeah, it's not the just aesthetic. about the trick. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's all like aesthetics and then music. Honestly, on music, like for me, when I'm filming my when someone's filming me or when I'm filming somebody and. I know their like music taste. I kind of uh, film it to what I hear their what their song is gonna be or what it can sound like. If that makes sense. Yeah, I like I like the way you you look at this. You look at film skating filmmaking in a whole different way that I never heard of before. And I've been watching skate videos and filming skate videos for like two decades now. You know, it's it's so sick to hear that shit from you. How old are you, by the way? Uh, twenty eight. Twenty twenty nine this year. You got to think about that. Yeah, after 25, <laughs> I know. I find the same way too. I go to the liquor store. And I'm like, How old are you? And I'm like, uh, 25. No, 27. I'm like 28. <laughs> <laughs> you walk away empty-handed. You you said yeah. that you you said that you took a break after 2012 for a few years. Yeah. For like five years. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think 2012. I came back 2017. Yeah, beginning of 2017. So you only really been skating for like five years total? Yeah. That's yeah. insane. How are you so good for only skating five years? That's crazy. Yeah. What, were you, what were you doing in between? Did you go back to skateboarding uh, or what? So, no, no, no. So when I quit, um, the reason I quit is because so I was living in Carson at the time. That's where I'm pretty much raised at. And we had we were going through some tough times with my mom and uh, we, we had to move from there. So when we moved... We moved to Gardena for like a little bit and we stayed in a hotel because we couldn't find a place. And then we eventually found a place in LA. And at that time, like I said, I was 16. Like I didn't have no money, no, I mean, no job. I didn't have a car to meet any of my friends or anything like that. So that kind of put me down into like this, like the depression mode. And I was like, all right, well, I can't skate. Like I have no car. Like I'm just going to quit. There's nothing around. And, um, yeah, and then I, I kind of like pretty much cut off a lot of my friends. Like I stopped talking to them and got into like a partying mode and party scene. And just that's all I wanted to do was just party and go out and drink and, you know, just get hammered all the time. And then um, after that, I, qu- I quit doing that stuff. I tried to get my like life together. And then I got into making music. And then that was going pretty well. That was like during those like that SoundCloud era. Mm-hmm. sound up is for anybody um yeah it was going good at that time like i was doing shows i was getting you know paid for features here and there and uh but then eventually i got bored of that too like i couldn't really see myself in that light you know cameras all on you and things like that because to me like my personality i'm very like uh i'm an introvert like that mm-hmm. that's that's what i am and i and seeing all of that stuff on the media and like all I was like, I don't think I can take that. So I quit. I stopped doing that. And then I hit up uh, my one of my old friends, James, James Martinez. Uh, he was actually the one that took when I was so backtracking when I was 16, when I first started, he was the one that actually took me to a lot of places to meet a lot of people. Like he took me to my first Monday night in Long Beach. Uh, he would take me to uh to all these skate parks like in Bellflower and Firestone and all these things like he literally like showed me to there that he showed me that there was more out there than Veterans Park where my home park was but um yeah so I met them back up and came back we went to Dolphin rest in peace Dolphin Park uh we went there he let me ride his Aeons and honestly when I put those skates on like I felt like I lost everything I was like I couldn't even do a soul grind and after that, I was like, dude, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But 
um, my other friend, Jonas Acosta, he was like, yo, just ride my skates. Some ride some Volos. I think they're the, the ABs, the blue ones, the skins. And he's like, just ride them until, you know, you feel comfortable. And after that day was when I was like, I need to do this again. And since then, ever since that day, I'd never stopped skating. I, I had to get back to where I was in the beginning. Mm. So the, the Valos felt right? Yeah, they, they felt right because I quit. No, actually, I quit. I quit when I was riding Thrones. So when I came back, I was like, I need some Thrones because that was my, in my head, it was just like a mental thing. Like, no, Thrones is going to be the skate that's going to make me skate better. Like any other skate, like I don't want. But when I came back, everything changed. And they were like, oh, Thrones is not here no more. <laughs> we don't ride balls, uh, skins anymore. Everyone's <laughs> riding shells only. So I'm just like, okay, I'm going to go bought some Colts. That didn't work out. And then uh, I ended up buying the the Vibrolux, the denim ones, the new ones that, Oh yeah, the Valos. Before Valo, yeah, before yeah. Valo went down, and I was riding those, and that was a skate. So that was my skate. I was like, okay, I feel comfortable. I'm getting back into the groove, and then Valo shut down. I was like, great. Now what am I gonna <laughs> get? And then Julio came out with them skates, and then I bought them's, and from from them's is when I started, you know, I, I guess getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't think about that transition because since 2020 was kind of the year where so many people who haven't skated in 10, 15 years started coming back to the sport. The skating, the skates themselves have changed so much from that time. When you were skating in 2005, those skates are completely different now from skates that people have now, like Aeons and, and Thems and such like that. So you kind of have to, like putting a skate on for the first time nowadays is extra weird for that reason alone if you put the same skates on it might have felt the same but you need like something that that familiar feeling and i feel like that's hard to get now if you just started skating for the first time in 15 years you know yeah yeah definitely i mean like i said when i came back when my when my friends invited me to the park uh he had the aeons and it was he was running flat so i didn't know oh yeah flat, flat. <laughs> you know, i didn't know anything about it so you know i went did a i think i did a back roy and got caught it was <laughs> When I fell on my like hip, and I was like, "Dude, these skates suck." <laughs> I don't want to ride these skates anymore. Like, give me some antis. And then, um, yeah, got some skates with antis. But now, like, I have flat. I ride. I have Aeons, full circle. Now I'm back to Aeons, and now I'm riding flat. Yeah, that flat transition's right. got to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Do you think? Uh... Lately, like, it uh, seems like skating's picking up some momentum lately, and it's getting, like, a bit more accepted in some circles and maybe getting a little more popular. Like, what, what's your take on that? Do you think that's something that's happening, or do you think it's been some change in when you first started to how it is now, or do you think, like, I don't know. So it's a weird time. I don't know what to make of it. What do you think? Um, definitely. I think it's it's grown a lot. Um, I, I, like, I know a lot. I've heard stories about a lot of people getting hate from back in the day, but when I started in 2012, like I didn't receive much, like much to any hate. A lot of um, the skateboarders at the park were super cool with us. Um, me and Robert, uh, we went to skate spots together. Uh, they skated this, we skated that. Like we just, we just like it was like a bond, and. Till this day, like, I still hadn't come across someone at a park, like, talking, you know, talking all this stuff about, uh, about role players, or they, at least they don't say it to me. Like, I haven't came across it. Yeah. I honestly think that the hate is kind of going away now, and it looks like it's getting more popular. I mean, since COVID happened, like, I've, I've seen, you know, the rise of this role playing stuff go up. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like you see a lot of new people starting and in Long Beach, you see a lot of people on on roller skates and, and inline skates and uh, you see a lot of like people coming back, you know, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, it's it's cool to see like, I don't know, it's just fascinating because I was just wondering what, what your take is on that because me like, because I've been around skating I'm a freaking dinosaur, right? So like I've been like around like so like when it was super popular and then it was like completely like dead. And then like now it's like, oh, like something's happening. But that's cool to know, like in your experience that 
in 2012 when you started that there wasn't you weren't experiencing much hate because growing up us skating in new york like we weren't really dealing with much of that but then when we travel we'd start feeling that from in other places like you know go to san francisco or san diego you feel like a, a bit more but it seems like all that's kind of dying down so kind of cool yeah i mean it's it's crazy um the reason why i feel like when uh like skateboarders or any other sport doesn't hate is like if you go to the park like you go to a park and you know what you're doing like you're not um like cutting people off or you're not like hogging up a, an obstacle like i mm-hmm. when i go to skate parks like i have skate park etiquette like mm-hmm. you go i go you know i'm not gonna wax things without like telling you like yo can i wax this or, like yeah cool yeah. I'm like, or if i wax it like yo just be careful it's kind of fast and then like oh cool, yeah you. you know type yeah. deal like i i feel like it, yeah like that like if you if you just have like you go in there and not just be like oh yeah like skateboarders like get out of my way all that type that type deal like i feel like there should be no hate towards you because if they see that they're gonna be they're gonna see like oh maybe we shouldn't act like a dick to them Mm-hmm. Like mutual respect goes a long way. Exactly. I feel like everybody yeah. should take a uh, like like how you take a driving test before you get your license. You should take an, an etiquette test before you enter the skate park. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. There needs to be an etiquette officer at the front. Yeah, etiquette yeah. officer handing out That's fucking it. tickets to people and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no sitting on I'm, that ledge. You go this way. You don't go the other way. You know. Yeah. Let, let them With know. A whistle. <laughs> yeah. That I like. Um. Like when we go to skate parks too, like with all my friends and, and, you know, I'll sometimes sit, I'm sitting on a ledge with like a skateboarder or whatever. And I, and I can hear him talking like, you know, and say like, for example, like Jeremy, like Jeremy Soderberg, like, you know, he has so much control or Joey Lunger and then they go and skate the bowl or skate like the certain rail or ledge. Like I can hear him in the talk in the, in the sides talking like, like, yo, that's tight. Like, how does he do that? Or they'll tell me like, yo, how does he do that? Like, how long have you guys been doing this? And then from there, that's like when I build that relationship and then they start like, you know, they start fucking with us. Like, oh, cool. Like, you guys can skate this with us too type deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn, that's dope, man. Like, uh, yeah, I've been hearing that lately at the skate parks around like California, just like Sunday brunch. Like, you're going around and, you know, uh, you know, Someone will be ripping, like flying around, and they're like, "Oh, that's cool. How does he do that?" Like, are clapping the boards. It's hmm, cool to yeah. see like things starting to change uh, culturally. It's mm-hmm. exciting. Yeah, I like that. And it's that's how it should be. Like, I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, off the skates and off the board and bike or whatever you do, like, we're all the same people. We all wake up. We all go to work. Like, but when we come to the skate park, it's like. I feel for me is an escape, you know, from all of that to wind down and just escape, escape from the world. Do you run into, do you run into people that you grew up skateboarding with, or is that just a completely different part of California that you're not in anymore? Um, sometimes I do. I mean, because I'm, like I said, I live in Carson now again. So there's certain spots where I'll run into them or certain, um, like when we go to vets, like vets, I've since well, vets is closed right now, but when it was open, like I would go there and then I'll see the same people all over still doing the same thing. And we'll see each other. And I'm like, man, you're still doing the same thing. You're still <laughs> chilling on the floor block. Like you got nothing better to do, but yeah, we run into a lot of people. And like I said, they're still cool with us and they let their homies know like, Oh yeah, this is the homie from back in the day. And their homies are like, yo, come and skate. You know, I've, I've had a couple invites with a couple of skateboarders like, yo, come and skate or where's this spot at? Or show us this spot and come and skate with us. Yeah, that, that's cool that they didn't like, for instance, like see you skating, rollerblading for the first time since they saw you like as a skateboarder and like look at you differently or something like that. It's cool to see that you guys are still chill with each other because that just goes back to the whole respect thing and just like, oh, you want to do this instead of what we did before? Cool, let's, let's still go to the spot though. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, and it, it all comes with respect. Like they know, like I I treat everyone with the same respect. Like you treat me with respect, I'm gonna treat you back with respect. If you, but even if I don't know you, like I'm still gonna give you respect no matter what. I don't care if you hate it or not. Like that's that's just how I am. I'm not confrontational like that. Like if I have to be, I will be. But most of the time, I'm just chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially at the skate park, trying to be chill. Yeah. But um so I want to get more into the video. It's a heck of a crew. Um 
is like a name for this crew and how did you guys all meet um we met we all pretty much live in the same area uh jeremy gardena um greg is in <clears throat> long beach and me robert or carson j lord carson uh, but j lord me and robert were like the core group for us it was my core group like we were the ones that were just skating carson and um like i said like my friend james james was the one who actually took me around to meet these dudes like jeremy and uh who did i meet i was i think i met jeremy uh jc and all those dudes like that's pretty much how i met and it, it just built on from there like i was hanging out with jeremy hung out with jeremy met jc and then uh from there it just kept going up and up it what what's lte service provider is that the name of your crew or that's just like some random shit no so lte it's uh it came off from doing uh a video we wanted me and jay lord came up with this idea doing a a video off of our iphones and um, <laughs> it was kind of like, oh, well, everyone's on their phone. We don't have a camera. Like, what is, you know, we looked at our phones and, our, and the first thing that said on my phone was like LTE. And I was like, well, you need <laughs> LTE service and to use your phone. So I told him, I was like, dude, let's just let's call our thing LTE. So it originally, LTE came from that. But then we also gave it a name, call it, we called it Learn the Economy. But uh Originally, LTE came from came from a phone. <laughs> That's such an interesting <laughs> way to come out with a crew name. That's so funny. Yeah, it was just like, dude, it's just it's not trying to think so much about it. Like, mm -hmm. well, this is what it is. If, if people like it, they like it. They don't. But eventually, we just kept running with it, and yeah. It's funny. You're gonna look back on that in like ten years when like LTE was <clears throat> like, like now how we look at like three G or two G. Be like, damn, yo. We started this shit when 3G was like a thing, you know? <laughs> You're going to look yeah. back and be like, yo, remember LTE? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that, I mean, that's also another reason, too, why we wanted to change it uh, or add what you know, more meaning to the name. So I came up with uh, Learn the Economy and Jay Lord. He uh, agreed with it. So, I mean, because we also wanted to take clothes into a different route, too. Like, not just only role biting, but kind of shine out, like, in streetwear sort of thing just like what kyle's doing at brain dead like showing rollerblading in his in his platform so we wanted to do it the opposite like we have a platform rollerblading but also we want to show it to like the fashion world as well mm. i like so that. that's what lte is uh pretty much yeah it's, it's a skate it's a crew it's like our skate crew but it's more it's honestly more it's just more clothing for us but everyone in our circle is automatically LTE, so. Mm. That's cool. I, everyone in the video is just so cool. Even Dude, everyone, like, from all the different styles, Joey and everyone, it was so sick. Yeah, it's super, but, super. Um, and, and all the music matched the skating. So, like, mm -hmm. it was, like, like it was it went really well, well with that. But um, did you have some like favorite moments in the video? Like when you film like a 52 minute project, you have to have some like favorite moments or like some cool moments in that. Um, dude, video is super long, so I'm trying to remember <laughs> yeah. my favorite moments. But um, uh, start off the bat was J Lord, uh, the kink rail when he did the when he hopped the kink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, he's been he's been he's hit that well that rail quite a few times i've seen him you know go through it never hopped it but he's hit the top through the kink he's hit from the the, the bottom kink and um when he told me he was like yo i want to make my ender uh i want to do the kink i was like do you want to go straight through it and he was like no i want to you know hop it so i was like dude i already i in my head i already knew he can do it so i was i mm -hmm. told him to do it and uh the, he has a screenshot that he posted on his Instagram of me when he hopped the kink. No, he hopped the rail. And when he hopped on the rail, like, that's when I automatically knew, like, he's going to do it. So my face was already, like, ex like my eyes were open and my mouth was open as well. And then as soon as he <laughs> yeah. hopped, he, he took the screen grab where you see my holding camera. I'm just like. <laughs> yeah. And I, and, but 
that was probably one of the best moments that in that video that I that was was really fun to film. Yeah, because before that you see yeah. like the fall he was taking, and he falls very scary. Like he falls with his knee under him all the time. Yeah, so that scares me all the time, and I tell him like, "Dude, stop falling like that." Like, but that's how he falls. But that was one of my favorite moments. Um, like a high energy moment. Yeah, that seemed like a great moment, especially like when you're taking spills on something like that, mm -hmm. and then you just lace it. Dude, that, yeah, that was that, awesome. That, one of the best ones. Um, who else had a good one? Um, Joey had a good one. We, uh, this is the, his first clip in the beginning of the video where he uh, hopped over that. We were in. I forgot where it was. It was like hopped over this ledge and then into the bank. And oh so, yeah, that spot was insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That it looks for me, every clip looked, on that spot was insane. Yeah, it. I feel like the camera didn't really do so much justice to show how big it was but when you go there it's huge like what he did mm -hmm. jumped over the ledge into the bank like that's pretty yeah. big like big. yeah i wish the camera did a lot more justice or i wish i figured out a way to like yo that spot is huge but that's a, that's a tough was, spot to figure out to, how to film it huh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah i was trying yeah. different ways to see it like either the sun was not playing like messing with us and it was making everything bright or too dark and mm -hmm. it's just like all right that that was probably that was another one I like to film. One of my favorite things to film on that. Um, when you guys, Jeremy's, oh go ahead, go ahead. Jeremy's ender yeah. when he uh, the front back uh, front side or back side of the rail and then bonked off the the sign. Mm -hmm. That was also pretty cool. I did, I that was something I never expected from Jeremy honestly. Like <laughs> for the as long as I've been dating with him, like. I never expected something like that. So that was pretty hype when he did that. Nice. Yeah, his part was incredible. There were so many, so many, so many, so many good parts mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I want to, before we, uh, I know you have a question, but hey, before we do, just wanna, yeah. one time, sure. give a shout out to our sponsor, Blank by Rollerblade. And if you're watching live, hit the like button, please. Go ahead, Austin. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. I was just, um, I wanted to talk about something that me and you talked about before, Billy, which was like, when you started filming this video up to no good, were you guys, did you guys plan on be like, yo, we're going to make this full length video. It's going to be sick. We're going to have everybody in it. Or did you guys start, kind of like start filming one another and just accumulated clips and you're like, oh, we can make something out of this. Because uh, I remember like when Billy first told me about the video, he was like, yo, it gave me like live from New York kind of vibes. And I don't even know if you know what that is, but that's like an old school New York video that Billy was a part of. And it was pretty much just this dude, Billy filming everybody just at a session. And then it became a video, right? Am I right? By Billy, this? yeah, Billy, Billy Sean. Sean. Yeah, Billy Sean. Yeah, yeah, it was just like this old New York video that basically just had like some familiar faces, but like so many new faces and just like so many different styles and yeah it was really cool so it reminded me of that but it's yeah that's again what I'm, I'm curious I'm a dinosaur if, like, and... <laughs> yeah you oh, feel like yeah. it now right but i'm curious if like yeah. that's how this video was because it had such a similar vibe to that and i'm curious if it was like spawned kind of like in the same way you know um so the the, the way the video came about um we did our our first video which was on the phone which was just called lte wireless i believe and um you know it was fun doing that like so me and I was telling J Lord, um, yo, what if you, what do you think about if I get a camera and we film a real video, like we, you know, we'll shoot something with the real camera and he, you know, he was down for it. So I was like, dude, okay, cool. Found a HBX for, uh, I think like 300. Damn. Sorry, that's a good lucky. deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really. I was really lucky on that. And then it was around, uh, blade cup, uh, 2019. Yeah. 2019 blade cup. And, we all just felt good. Like we went to Blake Cup and it was just hyped and we were all together and um we were just like, yo, let's just make a video. And we started the next day, I believe. So from Blake Cup, we're like, okay, we're gonna do a video from Blake Cup and I mean we're gonna do our video, we're gonna start on Blake Cup and then release it next year. Which was twenty twenty when we released it. Uh mm -hmm. Yeah, so it all it, it pretty much came from just our, our, our video from the phone because that, that whole even filming from the phone was fun because we would literally get off of work. You know, I get off at like three, four, 
and I hit up Jay like, yo, let's go skate. And like, yeah. And you would think like, oh, yeah, let's go skate. We're going to take like a big camera. No, we're just like roaming around the city with our iPhones, just like filming whatever, and just doing whatever. And everyone was coming out like everyone was coming out skating like it was like a going to be like a real video. But it was just for the phone. But that's that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, good enough. So like it, it hyped me up. And then it was just like, I was just, all right, cool. Let, let's do a real video. Let's 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 show people, you know, what more we can do with the real camera. So where, where's all this cell phone footage at? Did you make something out of that at all or no? Nah? Yeah, yeah. It's on uh, it's on our Instagram, the LT Instagram, which is Learn the Economy. If you just go onto like the IGTV part or one of those, you'll see like it's probably the first video. It's the first video. It just says LTE Wireless. And that would mm-hmm. be the first iPhone video. And then honestly, you'll get so the vibe <laughs> that you get on that video from the phone, like it's pretty much the same thing as what Up to No Good is. It's just with the real camera this time. So definitely going to be good stuff on the Instagram. Everyone got to check that out. Yeah. 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 Pretty fun. I mean, we have other videos too, like promo, promo, like videos and 4th of July video, like all of us, like just getting together and making something. After this one, do you have any, any other projects coming out? Because, you know, you never see like a 50, like, you know, it's just so rare to see a full length these days. So Mm -hmm. like such a complete project. Do you have anything like you thinking of to do after this or? Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't going to really say, tell anybody, but, uh, yeah, so I don't, like, you don't have to, I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. You heard it no, here no, first, no. everybody. What is it? it? Is cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the exclusive. Uh, we're getting the exclusive. Yeah, Shut so down the we, podcast. Pressure's on, but no, not really. <laughs> yeah, we, we do have a new video. Um, uh, it's, I gave him the same time frame. I said for another year. So the same time up to no good was released. It'll be the same time we drop the next one. The next one is called uh, Band Ones. Band, Band ones. ones. Yeah. Does that mean something? Dope. What does that mean? Yeah, the, the reason Band, behind... B-A-N-N-E-D, Band. Yeah. Band, Band Ones. One. So the reason yeah. with uh, that name was because of some situation that happened on Instagram and some other stuff along with it. Uh, that the type of skating, like, when, like I seen the feedback and some of the skating, like, oh, the skating is like you know, too simple or it's just they're skating red curbs or, you know, a little like curb stuff or whatever the case is. And, and from that whole thing, I see like people trying to ban that, like stop skating red curbs, stop skating little stuff, stop, you know, stop doing all of this. So my head, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to call it banned ones because we're going to still do what we do. Like I'm not going to stop skating this fun red curb because you say to stop. Mm. So Especially just, a fun it, red curb. Yeah, like oh, very red, specific oh, red curve. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. that's a Cali but, thing. It's definitely a Cali thing. But it, it's mm. like you can't. You know, there's certain people that make red curves look fun. Like the Kelso brothers can make anything they skate look fun. Like right. they can skate red curb or or like in Spaceman, I believe they're skating this yellow curb that they had like a little launch, like a gap in the middle and a little launch to the other side. And it was just mm-hmm. like, dude, that was that was cool. Like. I, that that was very appealing to my eyes. And in the way I see that, it's just like, kids would see that and want, I feel like would want to skate. You know what I mean? Like if I showed one of my like cousins or anything like that or small, like back in the day stuff. I mean, like I said, no disrespect to all the back in the day stuff, but mm-hmm. like, Someone like you, Billy, like you doing crazy, you know, crazy hammers on rails and stuff like that. I showed one of my cousins, like little cousins that he's going to be like, oh, hell no. Like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> right? like, like, yeah. I don't got the, it's not that it's not that welcoming, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, he's like, I don't got the balls to do that. But and if he sees like Colin or Sean skating that, that like that, that curve I was explaining, he'd be like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. I can I can skate that outside my house. Like I have a absolutely curve, way more relatable. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then totally. if, if you build up to seeing what Billy did or what you did, Austin, and like now I want to skate a rail, but it's just all you know, it's just all preference. But mm-hmm. that's how I see. Like I feel like whatever you, how you skate, what you skate, like it doesn't matter. Like I feel like if you're just doing it, you're doing it, and you're doing it because you love it. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be a of what you skate. It's just like maybe you don't like it because you can't make that that curve look cool. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. Like. Mm-hmm. that's a good way to look at it because that's a skill 
in and of itself. And I was talking to Colin about that not too long ago. Colin's going to be able to skate forever skating like that. And like, that's the thing. It makes it very accessible. It makes it very fun. You get to be creative and you could do it in so many places. You don't need X, Y, and Z of a spot. You could take something small and make something big out of it. And it really like highlights the artistic creative side of skating. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm with you on that. That's awesome. Yeah, you, you yeah, could tell, it, you could like, tell Colin's a fan of your work too. He's watched the video. He was in the movie night, and now he's in the live chat now too, watching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I'm, a, I mean, like, I'm a big fan of Colin and Sean too. Like, um, those are probably one of my w- most watched skaters. Not to copy style, not to copy tricks, but mm-hmm. to get inspiration of how they use certain obstacles. Mm-hmm. Like on the last video, when Colin uh, went inside those the the ledge and he was going back and forth like hop to the next one back and forth like stuff like that like that kind that gives me inspiration to be like oh cool let me i can you can make something out of nothing Mm -hmm. there's always there's always something gonna do at a certain spot there's never like oh i can't do that like no you can do that but you're just focused on that ledge but you're not focused on the other obstacle that's on top of it you know what i mean like that's that's what i look for in their videos and i'm just like all right cool so next time i go skate like I'm going to open my eyes more and see what's around me so I can do this, make this obstacle look way more cool. Totally. Just by adding those little nuances, you can make like a trick that's regular be so much more just like the little nicks and knacks of the trick. And to your point, like, I think, I think you did a really good job of that in, in this latest project. And I think a lot of people in that project did that and CK and uh, Sean do a really good job of that as well. Just those little, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the way those little in- intricacies, those little like foot kicks, those little mm-hmm. yeah. tip tap, so many cool things like that are, uh, pl- you gotta, you gotta play with skating, right? You know, you gotta have, yeah. you gotta have fun with it. Like I, I, I believe that like not every, every obstacle needs a, a true KG or a true fish or like a, you know, a full cab, something like, Mm -hmm. like, um, you can do a simple porn, but like figure out how to make that porn look so good that no one else can do it like that. Mm. Like, like I, like I said, when I make it yours. Yeah. Yeah. I I learned to do the porn and step up uh, back torque. Like, um, yeah, the back torque, like I worked on that so much to like figure out like, how do I, you know, keep my leg up in a certain position and keep it, like that instead of it flying a different way like i'm so uh like picky about certain things like i'll do things a whole bunch of times like my hand is like my fingers look like this or (laughs) like you know hands are too spread out or i do one of these like i'll do it over and over again but i do that because i try to figure out a way to make this spot look good with that one simple trick that you learn when oh probably the first trick you ever learn like a soul or whatever like that you think just like a Kelso too. I don't know if you know them personally, but you think just like a Kelso. So it's funny that you're saying all this stuff. I'm I'm curious though, along those lines, who else do you like who else is skating are you like really keen on these days? Um, like I said, the Kelso brothers. I like uh Ryan Parker and Cody Reffner. Um uh of course my friends, uh who else do I like? Pat Ritter. I love Pat. Oh yeah, definitely. Marius, he's he's one of like a future prospect yeah. too. Like I, I love Marius. He's so sick. He's, <clears throat> he's super. I like his skating. Um, yeah. Who else? JK uh, from Korea. I think he's from Korea. Um, and Juwan. Juwan is actually like my favorite. I love Juwan. Sick. That's a good crew. It is. Yeah, and they, this is where I get like you know inspiration <laughs> from. I'm yeah. also like you know from the old, like um older skaters I do watch like a lot of old like videos like I'll watch you know read like Volo Six again. Um, I just Jeremy just recently introduced me to like a lot of the old like VG videos and <laughs> like, like that. So I'll I'll go back. Oh, and that's watch fun. The, yeah. Old be unique stuff now and you know get mm-hmm. inspiration from there and see what I can pick from that era and just bring it back you know bring it over here. Yeah, oh, that's fun. That's cool going through it because it's yeah. uh, I do that sometimes at Bellino. Like we'll just like uh, hang out like and just have a couple of beers and watch some like super super old thing that we never watched and just be like, oh, this is fun. And just 
the little things that also like how just the editing styles even or just some of the weird commercials or just fun things that people used to do but um mm -hmm. yeah yeah Bellino that's cool another one. He, he was also another one that i really enjoy watching and you know getting uh inspiration from and it's cool like what's funny is uh back in the day you know i used to watch you guys you just watch Bellino all the time and now it's just like i'm actually getting to skate with you guys you know which is it, which is it's pretty crazy to me because I feel like back in the day it was like hard to come by you guys like it was like if you're not for me I always felt like you're not like on this level like I'm not gonna skate with you type deal you know what I mean hmm. so now like I feel like it's cool that that we all get to skate with each other and like understand that we're all just skating because we love it mm -hmm. totally like there are like those little things in skating that could be like clicky. Um... But honestly, like, and I think Austin can attest to this, and I kind of see this in your crew too, but like uh, growing up in New York and like in that scene, like a lot of people skated together. It wasn't as clicky as like a lot of other scenes that I've seen. And I, I don't know, I see that in your crew too. You got like a few, you know, you got a few generations in your crew. You know, you yeah. got Jeremy in there and you got Joey in there. And it's it's a it's an eclectic mix of of different generations and younger and newer, so... It's cool. Yeah. I agree with I you. Mean, like, yeah. I like our, with our crew, I mean, I don't even like to say like it's a crew. It's just like, we're just a bunch of friends doing what we like to do. But like, I feel like a lot of people think that like, like we don't want people to skate with us. Like, it's not even like that. Like we, if you're cool and you like to do what you do and you know, you're not a problem and stuff like that, like you're welcome to skate with us. No, like, whenever, just hit us up. Like we're not gonna shut you down and be like, no, we can't. You don't. You can't skate with us. Like, we we always say this to everybody. Like, come through. We have people. I think I, someone says someone wanted to skate with us. Like, oh yo, ask them if I can skate with them. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I gotta ask. Like, just come <laughs> and skate. Like, or if you want, like, yo, where you guys skating? Like, oh yeah, we're gonna be at UCLA. Come through. Like, mm -hmm. That's it. We're not. Yeah. We're not no click. Like, you can't skate with us type deal. Yeah. Leave the ego at home. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you, you, you put out a good point before how like you used to look up to some people you watch like John, John and, and Billy and stuff. And then like you could actually go and skate with them nowadays, like, you know, like your old boys and everything. And I think that's one of the unique things about our sport is that like if you comparatively like uh, football and like Eli Manning's your favorite football player and then you're never going to meet the guy ever, probably, you know. You're just going to watch yeah. him at, on TV or whatever. But, like, you could have a favorite skater and you could run into him on the street and start skating with him. You know, it's pretty cool. I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that, that is pretty cool. Like, like I said, like, for John John, like, the other day I was just at his um, at his house. We were in his garage. And we were drinking beers together. Like, <laughs> back in the day, I'm watching this dude, like, at 16, like, oh, man, like, I, I wish I can skate with him or, you know, it would be fun to skate with him or just talk to him in that in that, that case. And then now I look back at it and I'm looking now, I'm just like, dude, I'm just in his house watching skating videos, like with, uh, with him and just talking, eating pizza, drinking beer, just like mm -hmm. you know, just regular homie stuff. Yeah. No, I totally, exactly. I like, I've, I, I totally had that vibe with a lot growing up. Like even, you know, John Julio, you see, John, I was like, Oh, John Julio, dude, like yeah. growing up. And then like, you know, now like, see him at brunch see him around everywhere and he's just like the homie so it's uh it's 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 a cool community in that way where kind of all that stuff where you had someone on a pedestal you meet them and that kind of comes down and it's just the homie like you said uh yeah or yeah um well i want to open it up for questions soon we have a good amount of people watching today and got a bunch of questions out there austin should we try to we have this new feature on yes, the app yes we do um Let's open up for questions. I have one thing I wanted to ask before okay, yeah, if, you, if you wanted to do this first. So you mentioned something before and it kind of like rung a bell in my mind. So quick little story. Um, so my brother who stopped skating in like 97, 98, started skating again last year and he's watching the podcast and stuff. And he might have listened to like the Feinberg one or something or the Brian Shima one. And he was like, yo, I listened to this podcast the other day. It was cool. But what's a what's a hammer? And I was like, Oh, that's a kind of an interesting question because I know people have different perspectives on hammers and you yourself, you mentioned hammers before, like Billy is like a hammer skater kind of. And I'm curious to somebody who's started skating now, 
in your mind what you perceive a hammer is because I feel like it's different than how it is when like me and Billy grew up because I people throw the word hammer around like uh, you could do a good trick on a down rail and that's a hammer but I my personal opinion I wouldn't really consider that a hammer but some people do I'm curious what someone who started skating in 2012 2017 thinks of a hammer is like what it is in your eyes mm-hmm. um I mean honestly I still think a hammer is still doing something crazy just something buck like like Jay Lord's trick that's a hammer Mm-hmm. jumping you know doing a double king that's a hammer um joey's trick is his ender doing a soul on the the electric box taking a drop like to some they'd be like oh that's not a hammer but to me i think it's a hammer like big mm-hmm. that's a big drop yeah that's a uh, hammer yeah that's a hammer you know and then it's i feel it's just like what you yeah, it's kind of hard to explain like what it is like, that's what, why i wanted to see what you would say on it, it, it yeah like but at the end of the day, a, a real hammer to me is what like J Lord did. Like that's always gonna be the original hammer. Mm-hmm. Like for me, mm-hmm. my eyes, something crazy like that. It'll be that'll be. That's what I I see as oh that's a hammer. But mm-hmm. nowadays, like I said, like you can do something on a little on a ledge, and that can be your ender trick. And but it's just the it's just like what you decide to do on that ledge. Like Robert did a true fish on that on that. Um, that curve ledge, mm-hmm. which is only knee high, and I consider that some like as a hammer because that's mm-hmm. a hard trick. That could be a hammer, mm-hmm. you know. Like that's a hard trick to do. I can't do mm-hmm. that trick, so, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to try it. But he that that's a hammer to me. Like yo, mm-hmm. if you treat and especially like the way you land and you come off the trick and you treat it like a hammer, then you know, be like all right, that's a hammer. Yeah, maybe like the way you treat the trick, like you said, because. You know the feeling you get when you're like gonna try a hammer or whatever whatever hammer is in your mind? Like your body goes through something different when you're scared of a trick, when you're anxious to do a trick. And I think in certain cases, like that alone makes the trick a hammer for you. Not even that it's something crazy, but like you push yourself to do right. something that you thought was impossible at all. You landed, you're fucking hyped. You have that adrenaline rush that you don't get when you just go and do regular tricks, you know? Mm. Yeah, so- I mean like and everybody's skill level is different. Like, you know, like, not many, not everyone skates rails, you mm-hmm. know, like, mm-hmm. I only hate rails. I would, I <laughs> don't ask me, yo, let's skate this rail. Cause I'm going to just tell you, no. I'll tell you no before you even ask. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to do it. But if you these days like, I hate rails too, man. <laughs> dude, like I, I nutted it one time. And that's when I hit. I was like, nope. I'm not <laughs> doing this <again."> but, <laughs> but if you say like a down ledge, I feel more comfortable doing a down ledge than a down rail. Mm-hmm. Like I'll top sew a down ledge before I ever do top sew on a rail. Right. Yeah. So, every, everyone's got a different comfort zone completely in skating. I think it's it's just like it's completely subjective. Like some people um, feel more comfortable on a down rail than just a regular ledge because it's just mm-hmm. what they're used to. Or some people, yeah, uh, have gone pro and. I don't even think they've done much down rail skating. And you know what? Mm-hmm. That's awesome because I don't want to do. <laughs> I, yeah. You know, and yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, it's, it's, it's what you make of skating. And that's the thing that's cool about it. It's really whatever you make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like your personality in skating, like what, you know, what you bring into it. Like, uh, I think the other day I saw on your Instagram, uh, you, when you went to the Staples center and mm-hmm. you were, uh, yeah, I think you were trying to do that, that gap where Carlos did. And mm-hmm. you were talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. into three, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, like that's a hammer. Like jumping from those stairs into that thing, like that yeah. that's that's a hammer. Or even if it wasn't something that big, just dropping in from something da- into a down bank, like that's a hammer. Like I like mm-hmm. it doesn't even have to be a grind. Like you just roll in and drop in and just take off. Like I consider that crazy because not many people would do that. And like you said, like you get up there and you feel nervous. And if you have that nervous feeling, then to you, you should know that, yeah, this is like a good trick. Like if I feel nervous and scared that I'm going to hurt myself, like this is a hammer for me. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. And, and yeah, to your point, like there are some things that, yeah, it's, it's, it's all subjective. Like there are some things that are like, uh, it's not really relative to the spot. It's relative to the feeling, you know, or relative to like what it does to your adrenaline, adrenaline in that situation. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good point. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, uh, 
Yeah, my brother mentioned that to me, and I like wanted to ask somebody what they thought about it, and I never had the conversation with anyone since that day. But I figured you were like one of the perfect people to ask for that question, so it was great to hear your insight on that. And then also, like, I, sometimes I just don't even believe in hammers. I'm like, I feel like if you want to end your section, just like a soul grind on a, on a ledge, and like go for it. Like I don't care. Like as long as you made that soul grind look good, mm -hmm. don't go on it like you went on lazy and then you just got off. Like all right, that's it. Like do something like spin out of it, you know, do a, a like soul land swivel out and like, you know, do like a swivel out of it or just something like I, I seen Brasco doing where he does a trick and then he'll land and then toe roll and then spin like forward. Mm -hmm. He'll land fakey toe roll and then spin forward. Like that can be like something to end the video too. Just as long as you end things with, with style and you're confident and you see and people see that you're confident ending it i feel that translates with people like well he's confident doing that so grind he looked confident so i'm gonna go with it totally it's totally like what you put across the screen as as how you're bringing it like that's that's a lot that's a lot to do with it i like that i like that you said that very well yeah i like this blade philosophy talk this is cool <laughs> blade philosophy yeah. i mean my 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 head is just running i like a mile, a hundred miles, and like you know, and that, good it spit it out. With, it just, it just comes with clothes and like everything. Like I, I always have something to think about. Like I'm never just like not thinking. So when I feel like I can bring something into rollerblading, like I do it. Music, clothing, uh, style, style from skateboarding, biking. Like each mm -hmm. one has a specific thing in their sport that they do so cool. Where I'm like. I can do that, but I'm going to do that with my feet or I'm going to do that with my hands, how they do it. Like mm -hmm. whatever the is like, it's not just all I get inspired by rollerblading. I get inspired by any type of sport that has a wheel. Everything. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Or anything really, or anything that's like tight. Like you said, music, all that. Mm -hmm. Should we uh, yeah. open up for questions? Let's yeah. open it up for questions before we open up for questions. I would implore you to please follow us on all of our social media platforms. Give us a like, give us a follow. You heard me say it a thousand times. If you haven't done it by now, I'm going to keep saying it. It's going to be it. annoying. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it. But uh, please check uh, all that stuff out. And shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Blank by Rollerblade. And dang, we got a lot of questions. Yeah, let me just uh, shout out to Super Chatters first real quick. Um, yeah. Quick shout out to... Moonshine UHMW, thank you for the super chat. Um, Robert Besabe, is that how you say his last name? How do you say his last name? Yeah, Besabe. Besabe, Robert Besabe. He says Dennis is Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no. No? <laughs> no? So, wait, how it used to go is back in the day, because all my friends were Filipino. And um, so every time I go to my friend's house, you know, they're all like, uh, oh, you're not Filipino? You're not Filipino? Or like, so I got tired of hearing the same question over and over. So <laughs> get my point across. Like, I remember, I think I would go to someone's house and like, are you Filipino? And I'll say, yes. I'm like, yeah, I'm Filipino. And then for some reason, it, it, it like, it trans, it went to like different houses of my friends. So, or other new friends where they didn't even have to ask me. They just mm -hmm. asked, they just already automatically assumed I'm Filipino. So I'm going <laughs> to say, yeah, I'm Filipino. Honorary That's Filipino. <laughs> but actually I'm Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, Honduran. And Honduran. Yeah. Cool. Um, we have a couple more super chats. Um, Scott Mack says, love the style, love the hustle, up to no good is the future. I agree with you on that, Super Mac. Uh, Scott Mack, uh, Super Mac. <laughs> uh, Let's call him Super Mac. Let's call him Super Mac. You, Scott Mac, from now on, Mac. your name is Super Mac. Um, super and Mac. shout out to Too Easy with the super chat as well. Thank you all so much. Um, by the way, we also split our super chats with our guests. So, Half this money goes to Dennis as well, so you'll be helping him out with your super chats also. Thank you. Appreciate right, it. So we'll be sending you some some beer money soon. <laughs> cool. I love beer money. Um, yes. Um, so I have these questions lined up, but we also have this new platform that I think Austin is going to be trying to. Yeah. So let's, let's be a test. <clears throat> Go for it. Okay. So uh, Chris Crowder says, Dennis. Every time I hit you on IG, you always <laughs> respond. Thanks for being so down to earth and representing skating in a fly way. 
What's the hardest trick you've ever done? The hardest trick I ever done. I think the hardest trick I ever done land in was a three, uh, three topsail. And I haven't done that in so long because how hard it is for me in my head for some apparent reason. But that might be the hardest trick of three topsail. Three topsail? It's a hard trick. Like the hurricane topsail way or the other way? Hurricane topsail way. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. It feels good like when I landed. It, when I remember when I first landed it, like I was in icons razors and I only did it because Aragon did it. I've seen <laughs> Aragon do it so many times. So I was inspired to do it. And I had the icons and I did it landed. I didn't think I was going to land it, but because how big those soul plates are, it felt like a magnet on the ledge where it was just stuck. So my ankle was moving a different way, but the skate was stuck on the ledge. And, but it felt good when, when I landed like in my, in my, face where I don't think if anyone saw my facial expression but I was just like while I was still on the grind and just land I was like oh shit and I looked to everyone and no one was looking so I, was like, <laughs> I thought no one, that's looking. the worst no one saw and it I was trying to it up and then no one looked I was like all right <laughs> that's Damn, the worst. played you <laughs> played you that's 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 one of the best feeling tricks I could honestly say hurricane topsail is definitely one of the best feel I would be super proud of that as well yeah I definitely want to try to do it again maybe sometime i want to get a clip or something like i feel like i can do it better now but i don't know i, I know you're not a rail skater but that's a definitely easier on a rail than on a ledge yeah everyone's telling me that but I'm just, <laughs> I, then in my head i'm just like all right if i if i overshoot it i'm gonna rib it if i you know if i get scared i'm gonna nut it like, <laughs> no I'd, I'd rather do it on a ledge than i've never uh, actually i've never done that trick like in my life but um yeah, like if I were to do it, I'd probably do it on a down ledge than a rail. Rail, oh, man. I'd rather do it on a rail. Oof. Yeah, down no. ledge. At least, at least in a down ledge, I'm like, I'll do it. And then in my head, is like, all right, I can slide with it. Like, I we can, can slide, slide down it. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with a rail, it's just like so many open things. My shin, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. Like, oh, I ain't doing that. Too many open yeah. things. Yeah. Um, we have a question here from South Coast Inline Media who asks, if you could film a project anywhere in the world to create a look, where you where would you choose and who would you film with? If I can create a project anywhere in the world, I would definitely create a project in Japan or China. And I would love to film with Sean. Sean who? Kelso. Kelso, Sean for sure. Kelso. Damn. If I, if it, was, if it was possible to do something with him, like somewhere in the, over there and like something new instead of just like United States and film with him and get something done, like that, that's, that's probably someone I would definitely love to do it with. I would love to see that project come to fruition. <laughs> Somehow we got to make that happen. I hope one of these days, man. <laughs> Um, we got actually a couple more super chats and one of them has a question. Um, so, uh, our next super chats from too easy, uh, Gregory, Greg Preston, shout out Greg. He says, when I was still in Denmark, I heard Dennis started skating again. So I came back to LA to get a clip of his true top soyal. Any tips for a solid TTS? Um, well, I, I I guess my TTS is very cheating, a very a cheater way. Um, I TTS the way I back royale. So I catch uh, my back royale foot is what saves me all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, that's why it, it's so easy for me because I can just do my back royale and just land my other foot on there. There's times like a lot of people, a lot of my homies seen it like when I'll go for it. And if my foot like goes behind me, my back royale is still holding me up. So I'm sliding while my foot is back here and I'm saving myself because of my back royale foot. And then I'll just like kick out and land. And they're just like, wow, like how is, how do you do that? Yeah. But yeah. it's like, royale that way. So I cheat that way. I, I do it. But I'm trying to just learn Truesman topsoles like without doing the soyale. It's for some reason it's harder. 
I don't know why. But. I got the secret to that. Do it the other way. So you force not to use your Royale foot. Mm. Because okay. I think, Austin, you do it like two different ways, right? When I, when I started doing it the other way, which was Switch at the time, it was super easy. I never locked the Royale foot. And it was per- once I figured it out, it was perfect every time. Because I used to hate that too. I do the same thing, True Top Royale with the Royale foot. And mm-hmm. every time you go in, it kind of just, you out of habit, you just lock that Royale foot in there. And that would piss yeah. me off so much. So do it the other way. Even if it switch and feels awkward, get used to it a little bit. And then you'll never, ever do that Royale foot. Okay. Yeah, I've been trying to figure it out. And I mean, I've been practicing switch too. Like my, the trouble trick I've been having trouble is topsoil. I can't get my body like switch topsoil right. Like it feels so awkward all the time. Mm. So that's to work on. Yeah, but, if that's a, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm look at this. Say, it turned into a, it went from a podcast to a clinic. Don't get me started <laughs> on the true topsoil, everybody. No, but I, I, my 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 true topsoil now natural is my switch topsoil, and my mm-hmm. my regular switch topsoil is terrible, horrible. I have no confidence on it, confidence on it at all. But the true spin is way easier. I don't know why it just happens that way. It's just yeah. your body just flows that way. It just goes. But yeah, I'm, I'm me and you are pretty similar in that uh, aspect. Um, yeah, definitely take that into consideration and try to learn that switch because I want to get it just a, a clean Trusman topsole like on something nice. Like mm-hmm. instead of doing this, I just want my feet spread apart. Like try it, switch. Let me know how that goes. Okay. <laughs> we got a bunch more super chatters <laughs> in here actually now. Um, next super chatter is from Sean Michelson. He says DL. He called you DL, by the way. <laughs> uh, never heard of you before. <laughs> yeah. Never heard of you before today, but I'm officially a fan, brother. Love the energy and creativity you're bringing to the table. P.S. Not directed by Tarantino, just written. But peep, true romance if you haven't. Okay, it was hard for me to read that in this thing. But yeah, it said peep, true romance if you haven't. Let me write that down so I can see that later or something. <laughs> Take notes. Nah, dope. Yeah. I like to hear about new movies too. I'm mm-hmm. going to check that out later too. True romance. Uh, all right. We have another super chatter from uh, Moonshine again. He says, "Save me a beer." <laughs> and uh, beer. and uh, them them goods super chattered us too. So big shout out to them goods. Shout out to them. Shout out. Um. All right. So we got a few more questions here. Um, oh, this is a pretty good one from Kevin Dugard. If that's how you said, I hope so. Um, do you intentionally pick out your outfits when you go out and film? And if so, what's the process? Um, no, I don't intentionally pick them. Uh, I mean, it's just what I have in my closet. You know, I mean, um, usually. Yeah, I mean, it's just what I have in my closet. I don't, I don't go out and like try to like, I need to look like, you know, nice <laughs> for the camera, whatever. Because at the end of the day, my clothes are gonna get dirty. Like, I'm not the fuck, I'm not the Kelsos. Like, they don't ever fall. I've never seen them fall. They never get, <laughs> yeah, they don't really me, fall. I get dirty. You know, I get dirty, and I'm just like, I can't do it. Like, I don't want to mess these these clothes up. But um, no, nah, I don't. I don't have any intention. Like, I don't intentionally dress up or uh, to go film or anything like that. It's just. I throw on my 2X and my baggy jeans and just go out. Your 2X? Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's big. Big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm relatively skinny. No, I'm like 45 pounds. I'm like 5'9". <laughs> but because like like big shirts, I, I feel so free like in a big shirt or like, mm-hmm. my jeans so like big. Like it just, I'm, I don't know. It's just weird. Like I feel really good. Like I used to wear like skinnier jeans and like tighter shirts, but... I just didn't have no motion in my arms or mm-hmm. especially with clips and when uh, well maybe I do intentionally dress for clips, but when <laughs> I had when I was wearing smaller shirts and stuff, I hate it every time I landed that my shirt will like be all the way up in my back. I hate that. And I'm just hate like that. dude. I'm like, what the hell? So that's why I got bigger shirts. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so I went I, from a large and went up. Then I was like, I'm gonna go extra large. And I was pretty big, still did the same thing. I'm I'm still like pissed off on my <laughs> Dude, I had to do 2X. We got 2X and they cleared the problem. So I was like, all right, you can just wear 2Xs. I did I did the same shit. I started sizing out my clothes last year as well, and it feels so much better. Yeah, I feel great. Like, mm-hmm. 
every time I go out, it's never like a time where I don't feel like good, you know, like wearing. Because I also feel like whatever you wear, you have to feel good to have a good skate day. Definitely. You know, you don't put something weird on and you're just going to have a, you know, I don't want to skate today like, mm-hmm. type deal. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, South Coast Inline Media asks, uh, do you have a favorite trick from your up to no good section and who helped you film it? My last trick, the sole onto the little metal bar on the ledge to the uh, fake Monroe three out. Joey mm-hmm. helped me. Joey. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah, Joey is is like my, my go-to guy with filming. Like, he, I, I don't have to tell him how I want it. I don't have to sh- like explain it. Like I just tell him I'm gonna do this, this, and that, and then he already knows how I want it to look. That's why I like when I get st- my stuff filmed. Like it's either Joey or J Lord. Like either either one of them two. Like I love how they film me because I don't I don't have to like explain. I don't have to do anything. Like they just they just get it. Mm-hmm. Having confidence in your filmer changes everything yeah. when skating, right? Exactly. Like mm-hmm. if I could, like if I had Greg film me all the time, like that would have been perfect. Because Greg was the, actually the one who like filmed me and made me want to like get tricks and film because how well he he like did his thing. So if I if I had like someone like around me all the time in my area it would it would obviously be Greg. Greg is like a really good filmer. Dope. Oh. Um, we touched on this before, but maybe we could, um, I think there's like a new kind of aspect to this question, but Chris Shackerman, Chris Shackerman says, do you think the way certain skaters have pushed the sport away from, uh, hammers to more nuanced and technical skating has to do with the recent uptick in the sport and the accessibility and how they're correlated? Definitely. I mean, yeah, it, like I was just telling you earlier, it's more accessible. It makes it makes you. It looks e- like not easy because it's not easy, but mm-hmm. it makes you think. Like how I said, like people are skating curbs and one skate a curb. Like there's a curb right outside your street or on your porch, your stairs or whatever, and that's mm-hmm. something you can wax and and grind. Like technical stuff, it just it's just is way easier. You know what I mean? And as you as you grow as a skater, you know you're gonna get better and better. So obviously you might grow out of that too. Like, cause I, when I grew up, when I started skating, like I didn't even, I didn't, I never skated rails either. I, I, I had the mindset of, of what I have now of just making things look cool on small things. Like I never was just like how my friend Robert, Robert Basabe, which is Rainier's son, biological son, if you only knew that. <laughs> yeah. He, he, you know, that was Rainier was his, his like, like God to him. So he yeah. was, I, he's like, I kid you not, would wear the same thing Rainier wears, get the, the same haircut and do like the same tricks on like the same rail. Like, remember he came up to Veterans Park one day and he had, Rainier had a new haircut and he had a, a mohawk and he was wearing tank tops at the time. And then Robert came to the park, skinny jeans. He had a white tank top and he had a fresh mohawk, and mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm just at him like, dude, why? <laughs> but that's dope, though. That's dope. <laughs> I'm like, dude, why? But yeah, like back to this question, I'm like, yeah, I think the new technical stuff and like skating little things makes it more accessible and easy, you know, might inspire more people to to do these things. And then as they do their research on the sport, like they might want to. You know, skate rails. Who knows? Totally. Well uh, I think that's true. I think that's a good answer as well. We have some more super chatters. We do. This uh, is flying in. People well, loving you right now, Dennis. <laughs> and look who it is. It's Rainier's biological son, Robert Basabe. <laughs> he said he got five on the next project. Shout out, Robert Basabe. Um, mm-hmm. Great skating in the new video. Uh, Matt Florentino said, much love, Dennis, and all the hometown Young Bucks doing cool ish. Hashtag Carson. Hashtag nine zero uh nine zero seven four five. Is that the a- zip code? Yeah, yeah, that's Matt. He's another. He's a another o- uh, OG Carson blader, I believe. He's get you know that crew. Uh, that's what's up. Yeah, learned a lot. You know, learned a lot from him too. And 
especially like like Stephen Cortez and all those dudes, like they pretty much taught me what I know, you know. Mm -hmm. but, and uh, Parker Richardson too. He sh came up in the super chat. He didn't say nothing. He just donated some bucks. Just so shout out to the crew. Thanks, Parker. Yeah. I think we've got time for some more questions, Austin, do you think? Yeah, we could do a couple more. Um, I, Let's I'm, do a couple more. I'm scrolling around. Do you have one lined up? Yeah. Uh, Parker Richardson says, who's your favorite comedian? <laughs> no, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> uh, on it, the comedian, there's this comedian on Instagram that I just like recently found out. I think he's a comedian, but his name is Drewski. Like that guy is hilarious. Him and Haha -Ha Davis. He's like two comedians, but they're on Instagram. They're not like famous, like not like Kevin Hart level. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. Those ha two guys on there. Haha -Ha Davis. Yeah. He he made his stage name Haha. -Ha. Uh yeah, that's his that's his whole thing. Ha -Ha. Wow, that's ballsy as a comedian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a risk, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you better be fucking you, you, funny. You <laughs> better be funny. Dude. You better bring the hahas. Ha yeah. That one. That's like naming your kid Rocco or something like that. You know what I mean? Like you better be tough with or that like, kind of name. Yeah, like King or some shit. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, I actually don't have another one lined up, but I could find one because there's a bunch. Yeah, I was scrolling on. The comments are, are going off right now, so we're doing like a lot of scrolling here. Yeah. Um, let's see. I guess we'll we can, I guess we could end it on this one. It's uh well Yeah, let's get one more. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, moonshine UHMW said. Oh, we just got one more super chat in, by the way. Okay, we'll throw it in after. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, we'll throw it in after. Cool. Um, yeah, so I gotta scroll back to it now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moonshine UHMW says, whose section was the easiest to edit? Whose section was the easiest to edit? Sam Jeter. Like, um, he's the one who rolled off the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he gave me his song. Another thing is, I know there's these things like where, you know, editors uh, pick their songs for them and all that. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't do that. I let I told all of them, give me a song. Give me give me something. I wanted their, their skating to match what, you know, their tricks. Uh, like whatever you listen to, give it to me. I don't care if it's pop, whatever. I don't, whatever. But uh, yeah, honestly, his was the easiest section. Like, he sh I asked him for a song. He sent it the same day. I put it on the timeline and I just put all his clips, like just threw them on there. And it just went with the song. And I was just like, dope. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. No transitions and that's it. Like, yeah. It that and it was fun to edit. Like, the song was great. Like, I was just like, this is fun. So that I, I think I edited that in 30 minutes. That's quickie. You just real quick. I just had all because I had my presets and stuff already set, so I'm just like, yeah, pop, cut, cut, and that's it. You got lucky with that because not everybody has a, a good taste in music and not, or not good taste in music, but like a song in mind that works actually with skating and editing and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So the fact that everybody got to pick their songs, that's like that's really cool that it worked out that way. Yeah, and I mean I trust them like. They all have good music. We all listen to pretty much the same thing. So yeah, I guess never... you don't. You don't. Leave, you don't leave the person who like you don't let DJ the car. You know, pick a song for yeah. this section. <laughs> the only person I don't would never let DJ the car like is Robert Basabe. <laughs> calling you out, like, Robert. Calling you like, out. He like listens to Katy Perry while he skates and. Like, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I don't know, but I, I wouldn't let him DJ anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no Katy Perry in the next video. Yeah, I mean nothing wrong with Katie. <laughs> no, no. I mean no, no. she does have some hits. We gotta acknowledge yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. She, she's not, you know, she's not that well known for nothing. She's gotta, <laughs> she's gotta have something good. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know cool. anything, but um, like having I Sam's song, which was like a heavy song, kind of. And then if I put Robert's section next, and he had like, like I said, a Katy Perry song, it's just like, yeah, it doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thing like it's okay, not really yeah. cohesive. Doesn't flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we got two more super yeah. chats, and one of them's a question. I guess we'll end, we'll end it. Yeah, we'll end it on that. Okay. Um. So, well, Rob Scallion uh, did, did a last minute super chat. He said, "Really cool seeing the blading community doing so much awesome stuff on YouTube recently. Appreciate you guys. Nice. Uh, thank, thank you, you Rob. Robert. And uh, the Biz One, Big Biz, this week in Blade says, it's who's your, boy. your favorite? 
it's your boy. <laughs> Who's your favorite Blade comedian? It would have to be Kevon Thompson. You say Coupon Thompson? Yvonne Thompson. <laughs> oh, they say Coupon Thompson. I was like, yo, that is a uh, stage name and a half right there. <laughs> you just messed up right there because now everybody in my in the crew is going to call him. Oh, no, no. We got to backtrack that. Fuck. Uh, my we're bad. trying to delete this live episode. My I bad. Mean, I got to cut that edit out. that. <laughs> um, yeah. But. but hey, man, it was really cool talking to you and getting to know you a bit through this uh through this podcast and talking with you. And it was awesome seeing your video and seeing just so much talent in the video with the skaters and so much, and just like a really good project come out because it's rare to see something like that. So um, thanks for that. And thanks for coming on the show, man. It was, it was cool to chat with you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate coming on here. You know, it's was one of my goals to, you know, one day get recognized by you guys to, you know, to get on here and shine light on, you know, my friends and like future things that I have going on. So yeah. Thank you guys again. Appreciate it. Do you have any, uh, last words, shout, shout outs, last words, any words of wisdom, things you want to say before, uh, we part ways. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you know, shout out to all the homies. Uh, like I said with, to them all the time without them, the video wouldn't be up to no good. Uh, shout out to my sponsor, Moonshine. You know, they just made me pro for the uh, for his brand, so that's pretty pretty dope. Oh, yeah, no, you get you gonna get a wheel coming out soon. Uh, I don't know. I, what, it's up to him. Like honestly, like uh, to me, I'm just more hyped that I'm on a wheel. You heard it here first. Dennis Lopez nope. coming out with the Moonshine Pro Wheel 2021. <laughs> 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 but yeah i mean shout out to them and um just keep skating man like that, that's i know it's cliche but just keep doing what you do like block out everything all the hate and just skate for fun skate with do you love it if that's what you love to do then do it like you don't have to you have no one to impress but yourself Word. Nice. Dope. Well said. Well, I just want to say before we sign off that after watching Up to No Good, which, by the way, is in the link in the description and for anybody watching on YouTube to go check it out after this. Um, yeah, after watching that video, it's it's good to see that there's like a bright future with all the newer generation of skaters in our sport. And this is definitely proof of that. So thanks for making that video and sharing it with everybody. Everybody, I highly urge you to go check it out. Cool. Thank so. you, guys, man. Appreciate it. Hell yeah, definitely. Sure. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned um, Thursday for our next episode with Yo-Yo about Winter Clash. So check that one out. Everybody, thanks for watching. Peace. Peace. Hope to skate with you soon, Dennis. Hell yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm always with John John. I mean, John John's been around uh, skating with us. So just hit him up or hit me up. We get to skate. For sure. Dope. Peace, yeah. man. Boy. Later, everyone. Keep talking. Peace.